The two-handed sword has been a part of Chinese military history and culture for over 2,000 years. Some of the earliest known examples date back to the Qin Dynasty of the 2nd century BC. During this time, developments in metallurgy allowed smiths to create steel swords with longer blades and grips than their bronze counterparts. Qin Shi Huangdi, the first emperor of China, was entombed with over 8,000 terracotta warriors to protect him in the afterlife. Many of these effigies carried replicas of the two-handed bronze and steel swords used during that era. Tomb rubbings and artwork from the following Han, Sui, and Tang dynasties suggest that two-handed swordsmanship remained an important part of the military tradition. During these periods, swordsmiths also developed the differential heat treatment process. By using clay to cool parts of a heated sword at different rates, the Chinese were able to produce blades with hard, sharp edges that retained a softer, more durable spine. The Japanese adopted the manufacturing techniques of this period and used them as the foundation for their sword-making arts. The two-handed sword played an integral part in defending the Chinese Empire during the Song Dynasty. The famous general Yue Fei armed his troops with a two-handed weapon, now commonly referred to as the Yue Fei Dao, in order to help repel the invading Jurchen army of the north. With a blade handle ratio of nearly one to one, the Yue Fei Dao has qualities of both a sword and a polearm. This sword provided the ideal combination of reach and power for striking down the horses of incoming cavalry and then engaging the dismounted foe on the ground. With the defeat of the Song Dynasty by Kublai Khan, two-handed swords seem to fall out of use by imperial troops. There is no archaeological evidence that the Mongol rulers of the Yuan Dynasty employed two-handed sabers or swords. This is not surprising given that the Mongol army was entirely composed of cavalry, whereas two-handed swords are primarily infantry weapons. After the Mongol Yuan Dynasty gave way to the Ming, military accounts of two-handed swords shifted to its use against the northern invaders and coastal pirates. The famous general Qi Ji Guang, who saw service in both theaters, illustrated the two-handed saber techniques his troop used against the pirates in his first manual, the Ji Xiao Xin Shu. There is conjecture that General Qi took these techniques from captured Japanese who worked in league with native Chinese pirates of the coastal Taizhou area. However, it is just as likely that he drew upon the rich native tradition we have described thus far. General Qi's second manual, the Lian Bing Shi Ji, describes the training methods he used while defending a section of China's northern border with Mongolia. The manual describes units armed with the Chang Dao, a long two-handed saber similar to the Zhan Ma Dao used to deal with incoming Mongol cavalry charges. Chang Dao tactics were similar to those of the Yue Fei Dao, taking advantage of the weapon's length and leverage to attack both horse and rider. During the Qing Dynasty, the Manchu rulers, as recent foreign invaders themselves, relegated the two-handed sword to the non-Manchu portions of their military. The Huangchao Li Qi Tu Shi, or Illustrated Regulations for the Ceremonial Regalia of the Current Dynasty, describes four types of two-handed saber for use by the Lu Ying, or Green Standard Army. Among these four, the basic model of the Green Standard was the Zhan Ma Dao, with a blade 3.4 Chinese feet in length and a handle measuring 1.3 feet. The two-handed sword was an active part of the Chinese military as late as 1945, when nationalist troops carried large Miao Dao and Da Dao into battle during the Second Sino-Japanese War. Well-known regiments like the Da Dao Dui, or Big Blade Troop, used their swordsmanship in the trenches to protect key areas of the Great Wall during the Japanese invasion. The use of the Xuan Sojen and the Miao Dao, a modern variant of the Zhan Ma Dao, was taught at the Central Military Academy in Nanjing. That Miao Dao form, along with General Qi Ji Guang's Xuan So Dao form, is the basis for the techniques demonstrated in the second portion of this video. Bung Tiao and Khan are two basic cuts that typify the powerful, aggressive style of combat associated with a two-handed sword. In this sequence, the upward beating Bung Tiao movement deflects an incoming blade off target, creating the opening 
for a powerful downward con cut. The two-handed swordsman also has a variety of short percussive cuts at his disposal. Here, I initiate an exchange with a long energy thrust or tsu. After deflecting the counter thrust with a circular beating movement, I deliver short energy P cuts to my opponent's arm and then his neck. The pressing technique Ya takes advantage of the torque one can generate with the long two-handed grip, knocking the opponent's sword to the side to create an opening. After putting my opponent on the defensive, I maintain the initiative with a ya or press followed by a G cut. The power and stability of the two-handed grip makes it ideal for intercepting movements that preempt an opponent's attack. By jamming the incoming cut against the guard of the blade, the swordsman creates a fulcrum around which he can deliver a G cut to the neck. Hung P combines the cutting and leveraging abilities of the two handed sword, disrupting the opponent's structure as it cuts. In this sequence, I step off the line of an incoming attack, voiding it and creating an opening for the Hung P cut. In addition to percussive techniques, the two-handed sword can deliver a variety of slicing or drawing cuts, such as the upward sweeping Hui cut. This technique is analogous to the Liao cut of one-handed Dao and Jianfa. Note that the flat of the blade, not the edge, is used for deflection. The two-handed sword can also be used with a reverse grip. Here, I use a reverse grip to deflect an incoming spear attack and deliver a sure cut. The sword in this position covers a larger portion of the lower torso and legs, prime targets for the spearman. Two-handed swordsmanship was a vital part of the Chinese military arts for over 2,000 years. Its arsenal includes short and long energy techniques that are effective against a variety of different weapons and attacks. The recent resurgence of historical swordsmanship has helped ensure that this art will be preserved for generations to come.